Okay. So greetings everybody. I'm happy to be the last one today. Probably everybody is very sleepy and waiting for the peers. Uh, but let me introduce you in this presentation the new visualizations in the INET framework. Some of this work has already been released in the 3.4 version, but some parts are newer than that, so they are not yet released, so, and they are not available yet. So, first things first, this is a simple motivation example. It's part of the uh, INET wireless tutorial. It's the step 11, and it's a very simple network where host A is sending MIDI packets to host B through these three routers, R1, R2, and R3. And if I start the video, this is a video in fact, if I start the video, you will see the default OLNET animation. And, uh, okay. and, and the question is that I want you to think about is, what if you can tell which path the packets take from A to B just by looking at the animation? There are only two packets in this animation, so it's not that hard. Two, two packets are going from A to B. And of course, there are acknowledgments and things like that. So it's, if, you, if you look at it, it's really not easy to tell where the packets are going. And this network is not even complicated. I mean, there, are not, there, are, there could be tens to hundreds of nodes and a number of applications. So it's, it's pretty simple. So after thinking about this and having all the nice features of the new Omnit version, the 5.0 with all these nice graphics, 2D and 3D graphics, we came up with the idea of, of we could have domain-specific visualizations for the, for the communication protocols. And uh, this breakdown just shows you uh, grouping the, the visualizations according to the OSI layers. And I could just go through this. And the physical layer, we, have, we already had, had the, the transition interference ranges, that's not new, but we added uh, visualizations with which node is transmitting at the moment, which node is receiving, and then uh, a specific uh, visualization for signals propagating through the medium. And then we also did the physical links. A physical link between node A and B means that uh, whenever, whenever a packet enters the physical layer of node A and leaves the physical layer of node B, then there's a physical link between them, it's, if it's the same packet. And links are fading away if they are not reinforced by new packets uh, in, the, in the simulation. In the data link layer, we have the similar things for data links, except this time the packet has to enter into the data link layer and leave the data link layer of the other node so that a link is drawn between the two nodes, A and B. And of course, link breaks are important for routing protocols, reactive routing protocols. Whenever a link, link break happens, we want to show it somehow, visualize it, that, that the routing protocol will go in. Uh, <clears throat> in the network layer, we have the routing tables. If you ever work with routing protocols, and you probably know that uh, understanding what's, what are in the routing tables of all the network nodes in a, in a network <coughs> is pretty difficult because you know you have the IP addresses of the interfaces and the interfaces belong to nodes and then in the routing tables you have net masks and gateways and destination uh, IP addresses and all those numbers are just really really confusing so it's not easy to, to figure out which route leads to where and how can you access the destination so it's it's kind of difficult to understand it would be very, really good to have something domain specific uh, visualization for that purpose and the active network routes is, routes is something different it means whenever a packet goes from node A to B through a series of nodes, there will be a path drawn from A to B through all the intermediate nodes. So this packet has to enter the network layer of node A and leave the network layer of node B. It has to be the same packet. And then the visualizer will, will, will uh, draw you the, the path automatically. The same is available in the transport, transport layer, but this time, of course, for transport protocols. And uh, we could also visualize, we can also visualize uh, transport connections. It's different from the active routes because then we are only focusing on the endpoints because packets can, you know, go in on different paths depending on certain situations. So it's different. And then packet drops is, are also very important. Whenever a packet is dropped in the network, no matter which network layer component drops a packet, you might want to just see that happening and, and get some feedback. 
And uh, then there are a couple of other visualizations that are not related to type related to communication. Like we can visualize the physical environment, what kind of objects are in the physical environment. We can even visualize the losses caused by the, by the objects in the environment on, on the signals while they are, while they are, they are propagating through the medium. Or, <clears throat> or street maps and earth, now that Omnet has this 3D capability, it's great, and then we, we need to use that in INET. We need to some kind of, have some kind of support for that. Uh, and then, for for example, for mobility, we have some new thing that mo that uh, we are able to visualize the recent movement trajectory uh, and other things. Okay, so what are the goals? We identified a number of goals. Uh, the, f the first and most important that we want to decouple visualizations visual visualizations from simulation models because we don't want to disturb the the, the code. The simulation models code with lots of different kinds of visualizations that would be ter terrible. I mean, nobody would understand what's going on. So, we also wanted to wanted to make them, uh, want them want to make them configurable on, in terms of what and how. And by what I mean, uh, you certainly don't, don't want to visualize everything that happens in an expert because that would be a big mess. I mean, you wouldn't be able to understand what's going on because then there would be too much graphics. Now there's too little, and then there will be too much. So we need to. Some kind, they have some kind of way of filtering what is visualized. And of course, then there's how to visualize things. I mean, just think about color coding. If you could color code certain links or certain messages or paths, then it would help to understand what's going on in your, in your simulation. And of course, now that Omnet 5 supports 3D visualization, we definitely want to have that. And we also want to have multiple different visualizations simultaneously that Omnet supports having multiple canvases, and we want to use that feature that you can use that, that, so that uh, you can view the same simulation from different points of view, different aspects, and different visualizations to, to give you a better understanding of what's going on. And first, first, we want to make the visualizations informative rather than beautiful. So, it, of course, later we, we might want to to make them beautiful too, but it's not, not priority right now. And later we might even want to make them interactive. Okay? Uh, now let's get back to the motivation example sold this time. It's the very same example, but this time the default animation is turned off. And you, I put, put in the visualizations and configure to, to show you the physical and physical links and the data links. And then, uh, and also the, the, uh, the signals propagating through the medium. There are many other options. This is just one kind of uh, visualizations. Okay, what you will see. The, que the question is still the same. I mean, the, the packets. What path uh, take? Do, do the packets take from A to B? Okay, it's the same same question. So this is the first packets transmission. Is the end of the first transmission? That's the first link. It's a data. It's a data link. And that, that, that line. That's also data link. The acknowledgement goes back. The dotted line on the bottom is a physical link. There. And there you see the path. It's automatically drawn for you. Another interesting thing that you might notice is that there are two, <coughs> there, are, there is a moment when two <coughs> transmissions are going on the, on the medium at the same time from host A and host R1. And that's not a problem because there's a, there's a, there's, this is a moment. There's an obstacle between them. So they're not disturbing each other. So it's kind of solving this, this issue. Uh, <clears throat> in this slide, I have this very same example configured a little bit different way, and I'm going to run it in, in, a, in a longer period of time to show you well, to, to show you some more things about visualizations. This time, uh, the the routers in the middle will start moving upwards. And due to that thing that they are moving upwards, the link between A and R2 will be broken because the obstacle will get in between those two nodes. So if I start the video, it starts a little bit earlier than the previous one. The first thing that happens, the routing protocol kicks in and starts, the AOD, AOD the routing protocol starts to find out the route between host A and host B. And the nodes are exchanging routing packets. It's, it's AOD routing packets. And eventually, it will find a route between A and B, and the first UDP packet, as you can see, there's no UDP packets passed, right, still. We'll just 
go from A to B and the root will appear. Okay, there's the root. And now I click fast, anyway, fast run so that it goes faster. So the nodes start to move upward. You will see the movement trajectory and now the R2 is approaching the wind break limit. You know, the, the, the obstacle is getting in the way and then the, the, the root will just fade away. And also the other links are fading away because they're not used anymore. And now that the root is fading away, the, the routing protocol kicks in again, new links appear, and then a new root appears, now this time through host R1. That, that's a different route. And, and as host R1 is approaching the, the uh, communication range of A and B here, it's going to, it's going to um, break the links between those, those two nodes and these two nodes. And then the routing protocol, the ALD routing protocol will kick in again. But meanwhile, the packets number is increasing, number of receipt packets. So wait a little bit. And it's funny that it will, be, it will jump a little bit. So it's not smooth yet. It will jump a little bit because uh, uh, it takes some time for the routing protocol to find another route and, and then until that moment. And until that moment that R2 goes out from the obstacle, nothing really happens. And then a new, new route is found. OK? And again, packets. Packets are being received. So it's just a matter of configuration, and there could be many other different kinds of configurations. I have three examples, but you don't see it for some reason. Ah, there you go. <laughs> okay, there you go. So what you see here is basically two packets are transmitted. You see the signals propagating through the medium. Uh, you see the, the first bit, the transition of the first bit and the transition of the last bit. Those are the bubbles. And the first packet comes from the pedestrian zero. It's just a stream packet and an acknowledgement comes from the access point. You see two mobile nodes here moving around and two cars. At the, at the top, and this is the street map of Boston downtown, and uh, the red blocks there represent, are representing houses. They are blocking, actually blocking the signals and, and things like that. So this is just an example. Configured, I just configured another example so that to show you that 3D visualization is also possible. You don't have to. I mean, this the whole this whole thing that that we are that, that you see here the, the signals propagating through the medium. But this is not essential. It's just it's just uh, nice to look at I mean, this level of detail because this is this is in this is non non nanosecond scale. So let me just start over because I didn't see anything in this. Screen. Okay, no, it's nice better. So how to use visualizers? It's pretty simple. Uh, all you need to do is put the sub-module into your network or whichever module you like and then configure it. For example, in the, in the first example, I put just one visualizer, routing table canvas visualizer, which is a 2D visualizer. And here's a configuration for that, which means that please show me the path is towards this node in all the routing tables of the network. Because by default, it's going to uh, subscribe for routing table change signals on the on the root module, so it will it will uh, be notified of any change in any routing table. So it even works even during the simulation, of course. In the second example, I use the integrated canvas visualizer, which just this is just just a component mod module that integrates all the primitive visualizers together, so that you can use them all at once. And this in this example, I configured the data link visualizer, the network root visualizer to show the data links and the active network routes for these kind of packets, UDP, data, star. It's a field of criteria. And the third example is just for showing how, how you could conf configure showing a map file in your simulation. Here, this earth, mapboston.earth, this is a very simple XML file. 
pointing to some URL and some data, and it's it's just shown as much in the simulation. So what parameters do visualizers have? There's a generic parameter called the target canvas that's used for multiple visualiz visualizations at the same time simultaneously. You need to specify where to put the graphics. So that's by default the, the canvas of the, of the, of the uh, root module. And then some visualizers do multiple things at the same time, so you can turn on and off sub-visualizations sub for them. And again, you don't want to visualize everything at the same time, so we obviously need filters load filtering, packet filtering, whatever. And then styling, of course, color coding, sizing, whatever, images, and so on. Where are they? They're under the visualizer folder. And they have a very simple naming convention. Canvas visualizer is for 2D and OSG visualizer for 3D. And then we have uh, integrated visualizers for convenience, but you can build your own because it really depends on how many, what kind of visualizer do you want. Depends on what you want to see on the screen. So this is just for convenience. And internally, as I told you, that there are separate modules from the network models. They communicate with the network models with Omnet++ signals. So visualizers subscribe to signals that are emitted by the models. <coughs> These signals are emitted anyway, so it's, they are not even new signals. Or they are, they are useful signals for statistics for, or for any other purposes. And sometimes visualizers might need to call C++ functions on, on certain modules, but it's never the other way around. We don't want to have that. Uh, of course, we need to have communication parameters for this, where to subscribe for the signals and where to find certain modules to query for data that is to be drawn on the screen. Thank you. I'm happy to answer questions. Unfortunately, that I didn't show you if, you if there are many routes, then some routes some might be overlapping, mm -hmm. so it tries to you know, move the lines so that uh, you can uh, see they color them differently. So if there are many okay. routes and in, in the, the network, it's like, shown. It's easier for understanding. I wouldn't say a lot of requests, but we, we, we believe that uh, a good animation can be a good selling point. Okay. Uh, also for commercial users internally, but I think also for the open source community. If you are doing some simulation and all what you have is some numbers, then it's, I mean, if you have to show the numbers to somebody, then look, <coughs> this is the numbers, and then the guy can say that, okay, and I can come up with any kind of numbers. And if you can s show some nice animation that maybe, maybe it's more convincing, just for some people. I'm not saying for, for anybody. It's, it's especially true in the commercial sector for managers, you know. <laughs> no, I mean, but, so because I also teach at the university. But also for students, I yeah, think I understand. So that this yeah. is something that I, 
I could also I have plans for it <coughs> so that we could also use it to show students like when we teach. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that students. Always, so we could always uh, show because you know just telling them. Uh, yeah, I'm pretty this sure. This is how you configure yeah. the network. Yeah, you I'm pretty sure. Them, okay, this is how just, the, the just imagine when you tell a student that please look at the I, I'm, I'm content of the routing table and figure out what is pointing to where, and it's crazy. I mean, it's of course it's pointing there, but it's it really hard to understand. Just one more data point. Sorry, 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 sorry. Oh, <laughs> three years ago, <laughs> yes, and uh, we really needed a way to add at least some possibility to annotate the canvas to, to at least put some text, some explanations or some signs over it. And also, the, the, the final thing that motivated us to, to work on the canvas API was base, where uh, we saw the, the base user interface where we showed the outlines of buildings out of line segments and we were thinking that like, how, it is, how is that possible because TKM had no API to draw any lines it turned out that the uh, Christoph Zomer found basically a, a, a way to hack into TKM and, and specify some invalid string in the display strings and that was the way he could draw lines <laughs> and every, every line segment was a separate module. So now we thought, okay, now this is the time we should do yeah, That was a kind of request <laughs> for <laughs> animation or graphics. It's <laughs> a request for graphics. Ah, you mean the previous presentation? No, they are running in the same process. Same process. Same process. But if you are worried about whether if the simulation is slowed down yeah, by that, then slow. I guess that's what you're trying to ask. Yeah. Because I had the same feeling <laughs> watching the, the presentation. That's 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 obviously we know we know that we don't want to do that. So in the express mode, as it was written in some slide, that in the express mode the the animation takes negligible CPU usage which is basically that you sh means that you shouldn't worry about it. Whatever that means in terms of frames per second. If it means, I don't know, one frame every tens of, the sec ten tens of seconds, then, then there's that. I mean, in, in the express mode, there's no slowdown. OK? But the reason I the message is that because yesterday, um, I had a very quick chat with uh, my first about possibility to implement some client server Python's uh, the I know spook or Jupyter. So what I'm saying is that the natural the server running all the calculations, you know, one PC or one whatever, and the actual interface is running on the browser and between them we have the communication. And what what I'm saying is that this uh, new advanced features is really great, but uh, I got the impression that very tightly integrated yes, the server. That's a good reason for that. Because yeah. you, you can't just make them concurrent because the state of the simulation is not all the time consistent. Mm -hmm. So if you just let the simulation run as fast as possible and you peek into it every once in a while, then you can't be sure that what you see in terms of variable states and it's not you can't, can't because the, because the events are executing while you are looking looking at it. Can't, cannot. No. So whenever you update the user interface, you must stop the simulation for that moment. It's, you, you, you can't just run it concurrently because no, it's the yeah, all the issues. Should the uh, command line interface or the express uh, to turn all the animation, but uh, uh, most of the times uh, we need the animation is just as a display to the sunrise and like, right? maybe during the last row or especially the business, you just show the demonstration. For example, maybe not very impressive. So you run like the simulations in the cross computer and then you company on that. But in, the, in front of your potential customer, you just want to show the actual um, graphic animation. Then I'm just thinking about is it possible to separate this we or animation part and the actual 
there was a slide about reporting the video in a, in a deterministic way. Is that the answer? Uh, this two Python or Python I know to do is right now very, very hard. Uh, they actually did something, uh, this kind of the graphics and even some animation. Mm -hmm. You mean, for example, like taking the browser, pointing it to some simulation, and in the browser, That wasn't done by a, by a desktop recorder software. Mm -hmm. It was produced by the simulation. Because it, I tried to record it with the desktop recorder and it didn't look good because that you know the speed wasn't smooth enough. Mm -hmm. You know, it's you, you just you just can't record random frames because when you replay it, that it looks weird. <laughs> it looks like mm -hmm. things are jumping here and there. It's not. And is this already uh, publicly available? No, it's not yet, but. It's not difficult. I mean, after all these changes, it's it's not difficult. So it's pretty really interesting. It's not like it takes months to implement. It's not not difficult. So we should do it like a mandatory thing for the next summit that everybody provides a video. Yeah. 
simulation. You can control the, the speed of the animation from the mod model, so you can you have full control of what's on the screen. What is the detail? What is the speed? How is it recorded? And is that realistically reproducible? Mm -hmm. And then you have a good demonstration. Mm -hmm. You don't have to rerun the, the, uh, the your demo, rerun the simulation. You don't run into all these you know demo effects. <laughs> you, have, you have a video and it works. So, uh, let's say the work for today is over, so I will just...